There's a voice that sticks with you that many of us remember from our childhood that we looked at on our TV screens growing up. A person that our fathers loved and trusted, so it made us feel that way too. It was the voice and comfort of Bill Paxton. Bill in the 1990s was a huge figure in Hollywood that stood not only for the rough and tough blue collar culture, he picked roles that stood out to people, whether big or small, but even the small ones turned out to be enormous for him and stick around for quite some time. He was the icon that men wanted to be and women wanted to be with. It didn't hurt that he made every dad in the 90s want to buy a red Dodge truck. His death came unexpected and unwanted, and that's what made it hurt so much. Bill himself, even having worries about the last two weeks of his life, and almost like he knew something, many people don't know the details of Bill's death, or even more so of what happened after his death and what his family was put through. This is what should have been for Bill, but this is what we got in the end, the loss of Bill Paxton. Never live that part down. I, I'm sure if I live to be a hundred and I do a thousand movies. Drive, drive. No. Then would you? Look, you have a baby. I have a three-year-old son named James. No kidding. He's uh, into Bambi right now. Wait. Just let me hold it in my hand, please. Uh, I have parked cars at the Beverly Hills Hotel. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I had the opening line. I was the first guy to greet the people when they came up to the hotel and my whole thing was you know welcome to the Beverly Hills Hotel you have arrived <laughs> in the 90s Bill was on top of the world being a part of several huge movies that still have their moment in box office history back-to-back -back hits that even Bill himself said where do you go from here from Tombstone Apollo 13 and Twister it made Bill a household name in just a few short years Twister itself was Bill's standalone hit that put him on the map. In reality, at the time, Twister was a cultural shift when it came to filmmaking. Nothing like that had ever been made with the rawness of the film and hitting golden nuggets of actors that hadn't had their own moment yet. And Twister really is one of the first films to push CGI. It had never been used that dramatically in a film before and worked that well. Not only did Twister have its moment in the box office, but it would bleed out of that as well, to where people wanted more, to where it became such a hit that Universal Studios made it into a ride in their park in Florida, calling it Ride It Out, lasting until 2015. But Bill making Twister sealed the deal for him working in Hollywood for the next two decades. People knew him not just by his face, but by his name after that. And the mid-90s film history is about to be made, again with Bill right in the middle of it, Bill's about to go right back into a big movie that will not only be the biggest movie to come out of the 90s, but still to date, one of the biggest movies ever made, breaking all records. Bill would grab a part in the movie Titanic. So now Bill rides the wave of Hollywood into the 2000s. Some movies are gold and some movies are just lost in the background, but he continues to be a working actor. For a moment there, Bill somewhat disappeared from the spotlight for just a brief moment before he shows back up in a big way. A show called Big Love was being passed around and worked on, and the script would end up in Bill's hands, so much so that Bill loved it and got the part, the lead part. The show blew up, putting Bill back on the top of the charts when it came to him being back on TV, putting Bill right back in people's living rooms where they could see his face. The show would go from 2006 to all the way to 2011, having its moment in the sun Many people may not be aware of this, but in 2001, Bill, who had kept a friendship with James Cameron, was still so interested in the Titanic wreck site that Bill was asked to be part of a documentary called Ghost of the Abyss. The documentary itself was about the Titanic and digging through the site. Bill was the narrator and seen in the background, being hands-on in the sub as well. It's a beautiful film and the only one of its kind to this day where you see different layers of the Titanic wreck. It just so happens for the moment in time that while Bill was with James Cameron in the middle of the sea, seeing the Titanic in 2001, one of the particular days would be September 11th. As news starts to come through about what is happening back in the States, a video camera would capture the moment 
Bill was reacting to the news and then relaying the news back to James Cameron. It's a crazy moment in time getting to see two people react to such a tragedy and processing it. It's also a moment in time where you get to see Bill be himself explaining what's happening to his friend James. It's a fascinating video that just sits in the history of that day. In Bill's last days, he's working on his last big project that's become his new 9 to 5 in Hollywood for a moment. A spin-off show called Training Day, based off the movie in 2001, the show keeps Bill busy and giving him steady work. Bill even has his son by his side, making a cameo in the show. Bill says himself he couldn't be more thrilled. It really was a special time for Bill and his family as he was working in town, just around the block from his home, where he could go back to his family and sleep in his bed at night. In one of Bill's last interviews, he even talks about it, saying it was a special time. He says that he spent that summer watching Stranger Things with his family, but Bill finishes the first season of the show, and with those last days, Bill had been telling his wife in private that he was exhausted more than normal, and sometimes short of breath. The filming was intense, but soon Bill knew something was wrong. It started that simple, just not feeling right. It's January of 2017 and Bill is in the last two months of his life. Bill, who has had heart problems in the past, going all the way back to when he was 13 years old due to a sickness that he suffered from, giving him heart damage. And now the childhood problem is coming back to haunt him. At 61 years old, he's busier than ever and spending the last two months of his life in the hospital or in bed at his home. As Bill is undergoing tests, multiple times in a week and finding out fast that his heart has started to fail him. He soon told that one of his valves in his heart is damaged. As the news becomes real to Bill to have a replacement aortic valve, it's set for February 14th at Cedar sinai Medical Center. Bill's had surgeries in the past dealing with his heart, so it's no shock to him that he's still having problems with it. It's said that before the surgery, Bill tells his family that he just doesn't feel right about it. He's uneasy about what's going to happen. He's scared, he's older, and something has him uneasy. Bill's in the prime of his life. He's comfortable, he has a beautiful family, he's worked his whole life, and he just wants to enjoy the treasures of his life. So with the urgency of the problem that's inside Bill's heart, Bill is told the issue needs to be taken care of as soon as possible. So Bill goes into open heart surgery. When the operation is done, Bill has looked over and soon it's found that a problem has occurred during the operation to fix the first problem. One day later, Bill was rushed back into operation and cut back open laying on the table to fix his heart once again from the same doctor. Bill's family is upset and confused and beyond concern at this moment. Things aren't making sense, but what other choice do they have at this moment? When Bill is done with the second operation, he really never recovers. A double heart surgery, at his age, is not easy for any human. No matter what age they are, Bill slowly declines into the weak. Not much is known about this time to the public, as Bill's family has kept it private, and for good reason. But what we do know is that Bill was slow moving and in bad shape. Eleven days after the surgeries, Bill has not much of a life as his last days are with his family. On February 25th, Bill out of nowhere has a stroke and he doesn't come out of it. He's worked on, his heart never had time to heal along with his body and the damage has been done and Bill dies that day barely into his 60s. The news that Bill Paxton has just died is shocking to say the least for people to hear. His family is beyond shocked that soon met with unbearable grief. The public is told of Bill's death that day what people didn't know is behind the scenes, Bill's wife was concerned before and after each operation for the sole reason of the person performing the operation. After Bill's death, it was learned that the lack of experience and misguided treatment was a huge part of Bill's death. Bill's family sued Cedar Cyanide Hospital and the doctor that operated on him. This lasted four years while well, Bill's wife gathered more information along with her lawyers. But what happened in those 48 hours while Bill was being worked on was simply just a disaster by a doctor. But it led to a settlement in 2022 for the Paxton family. 
winning, but having to agree for undisclosed terms from the hospital. It's a sad reality to life that you can lose the ones you love the most at any moment. Bill was cremated and his family did all anyone else could do. Keep living and know that you had a special person in your life that loved you and cared about you. Bill didn't get to grow old and watch his children make families of their own or continue to do what he loved, which was making films. He was cheated in the end along with his family. It's going to be hard for history to lose the art of what Bill has made. Long live the memory of Bill Paxton, the dad that we had growing up that got us through the storms in our life as kids.